Is it right to take away uneaten food from a restaurant? If questions like this have crossed your mind, then you're in good company. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the daily habits and social conventions that make up the monotony of life. Let's slowly accumulate increasingly expensive water bottles with increasingly sophisticated caps. Grab your knitting needles and a blanket because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into their quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, under the covers with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Now, before we get started, uh, something happened in the house that I live in, along with Christian, who also lives in the house. Um, I was going through the house, haven't opened the bin and saw a full glass jar of kimchi yep. Yep. tossed into the landfill rubbish bin. Yes. And I was curious, Christian, it turned out it was you who'd done so. Yep. And I just wanted to know why you'd taken a full glass jar container yep. and thrown it straight in the landfill bin. It's a great question, Josh. Uh, I'm curious as to why you were going through the bin. I always rummage through our rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, that that's probably where that would finish is... It's spin. It's trash. It's not. It's not your problem anymore. It, and it never was your problem. Okay, so we've re- the big the big thing is we've recently got new bins. Sure. So glass is separated now. So it stood out to me that a glass item was okay. straight in there. Why would you not empty the contents into the landfill and put the glass in the glass and the lid in the recycling? Uh, j- just the listeners, I'm still here. I'm just gonna let this play out. <laughs> uh, that's a great point. And uh, as I explained to you, I I had a sore ankle. Great. I, this is this is legitimate, and I and can't op- believe. And I open I need- all my jars with my feet. <laughs> I can't believe that I need to justify trash, Josh. So just to get it right, your your problem was that not that Christian chucked out the kimchi, but that he put something in a bin yeah, that I, shouldn't have been I, I when his ankle had blown up and he couldn't. It, I would I would have thought empty the contents, glass in the glass bin. So as I explained to you that particular day, I was in excruciating pain. <laughs> I had a bung ankle yep. and I made a decision on the spot. And and mind you, I mean, there's always two sides to the story, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, this kimchi, just it had <laughs> been in the fridge for so goddamn long. And yep. I'd been waiting for so many months for this mm. kimchi to come good because it was really acidic and fizzy. Yep. Uh, and <laughs> I just was frustrated and I had a sore ankle and I wanted it gone from my, from, from any point of existence in my life. So when Josh raised this as an issue, yes. Um what how was it raised and how was it responded to? Uh, I'll tell you how. The kimchi glass jar was sitting atop the bench yep. out of the bin. Oh, it had been pulled out. Yes. H- had it been washed and put on the bench? Because that would be a concern I thought for me. Perhaps you wanted to eat the kimchi. I just didn't know. I was like, has this been thrown in an error? Because there are so many things wrong with how this has been thrown out. Wait, how a, many things? It's not been emptied, and B, it's not been recycled properly. So has someone inadvertently thrown a whole jar of kimchi <laughs> into the trash? It's like, maybe we've got to sort this out, guys. What's happening? Yeah. I mean, the broader point for me is like, Christian, do, do you usually recycle properly? No. No, <laughs> no, but I think, that's, I think that's part of Josh's issue is that... 100%, 100% uh, you are the kind of person who should be recycling heaps. I, I try. I certainly try. Hey, what does trying mean? Be- Throwing a full jar of kimchi <laughs> in anger into the rubbish bin. I, I, I do. I do try. And <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, that I try. Do. I certainly try. This is a, let make me make a that lot- clear. This is a rarity, what happened here. This, okay. is, this is... I make a lot of mistakes with recycling. I live in an apartment complex and we have a green bin. And the green bin is just for organic stuff. It's just for um, compost and stuff, which is amazing. Yeah. I caught out a guy who was putting black plastic bags in the organic bin. Oh, come on. And I was like, I just said to him, hey, no, no, no. And I was in, I left the house and I was just leaving to catch a tram and and I was in a bad mood and, and I was just, I was really, fr- I was like, mate, you can't, you just can't put plastic, plastic bags in there. Did he have so, organic in the plastic bag? I don't know. But uh. then I found another bag in there last week and I was like, and so I just wrote up a big sign and I think I might have had the word <laughs> fucking in the sign. <laughs> I think it might have been just stop putting fucking plastic bags Dion, in the bin. Dion all, also wearing a big giant foam hand <laughs> to point to the big sign, spinning the sign around, <laughs> doing flips. But I, but it, I just I couldn't understand how callous he was. Like everyone's doing their bit, everyone's putting, and then he comes along with a plastic bag. It, it screws up Hang the on. whole system. Yeah, but I, I, this, it was this you, is, wasn't it? This is where was, I, he, was he limping? Ankle a bit swollen, <laughs> was it? <laughs> So 
excuse me. Um, just got a little bit of this um, this eggplant left. Do you reckon I can get that taken away? Is that cool? Hang on, you're getting the. There's not much left. Just leave it. Well, what do you mean? I, th- I can eat that. That's like a second meal. What well, it's like, it's like half a second meal. Just you don't take away. Why, why, why the hell not? Because we're at a restaurant. Yeah, I know, but they've got they've got the plastic containers. It's totally fine. It's totally fine to take something away in a doggy bag. Josh, what do you think? Um, I think obviously the amount of food depends on it. So you you had how small was the portion left over, Dion, on your plate? Um, well, in this most recent case, it was justified, but previously it was it was it was enough for a snack. And we yeah. covered snacks in Patch Seventy, <laughs> a Fringe Festival show. Yeah, I realise I don't, I don't really do it at all, and it seems like a very American thing. The idea of the doggy bag and to package this up to go. Oh no, no, no! Yeah. I'm not American. <laughs> no, no, there's nothing to do with America. No, it's more that I paid for the food. I don't want to sound, sound stingy, but I paid for the food, and I don't want it to go to waste as well. And it's your food. It's to my do food. With it what you but, want. Yeah. So, so you consider, you consider once you've put that order through, yep. on the menu, yeah. That food is now yours. Whatever comes out. I know this sounds strange. Yes. But the food, the entire plate, it's all yours. Yep. And once you pay, everything on that plate's yours. So yep. you have rights to take that away. Yeah. And they're not, they're obviously not recycling it, especially if you were a chef there, Christian. You wouldn't be doing <laughs> Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank you so um, much. Let's get to put it in a glass jar, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's not that I consider it my food. It's more that it's going to go to waste anyway. The only thing for me is that I'm quite happy to offer to pay for the packaging. No, every there's no way a restaurant is like, you have to pay for the packaging, mate. No, no, no. I want to insist. But that's but that's not the issue here. The no, issue no, no. is not that you're putting them out by... No, that that is part of the issue because it's all about the person's face. When you ask for that to be taken away, it's all like, do they? what are they thinking at the time? If you're working in a restaurant, if you're working, you worked at a restaurant previously and someone asked to take it away and you had to get a container. Oh, it all depends if the restaurant... If it's like fine dining that doesn't do takeaway, <laughs> I might see your point. Yeah. But most restaurants do take but, away anyway. So why should a fine dining restaurant not do takeaway? <laughs> Um, no, I'm saying uh, you're but paying more. Th- no, no, like, no, if you follow the, Dion's logic, no, you're no. paying more for the meal. I was more saying about the imposition on the takeaway containers and those kind of things that a fine dining restaurant may not house those items so at you, all. Yeah, because you devalue the food, right, by putting it in a plastic container, and that's not what the chef intended. Oh, it wasn't. No, it's not at all. But for me, <laughs> Could I you think- imagine doing like a Heston Blumenthal takeaway. <laughs> they have to also put like a little a jukebox in there for you. <laughs> Okay, well, well, you just, just lift up lift up this lid and then start the smoke at about... Take this canister of CO2 yeah. as well. Um, yeah, but for me, like, I, I kind of... I try and I try and ask in the nicest possible way because I know it's it's sort of beyond the scope of their job, I feel. And the other day I got a... I, I asked for... I asked to get takeaway, but I asked for sort of... They asked me what size containers you want. I said big containers. And then I ended up just filling them about a quarter full, Ooh. three of them. I felt like such an idiot. I felt like such a moron. I was like, oh, this is so illegitimate. Here's here's a situation. I, I, I realize I don't really do it, even though sometimes there is a little bit left. I've only recently become comfortable leaving food on the plate. Normally I was like, I just finish it. Whatever's yeah. there, I finish it. Mm. But what I was gonna say is, was it a individual meal or was it a bit of a shared share plate situation? Because that's very different. It was myself and my partner, and they were shared plates, but there was quite a bit. But I'm just, just the two of you. Yeah, it's just the two of us. That's yeah. okay. Oh. So it's all going back to the same house. Yeah, all going so back to the same house. I feel like I'm a bit more okay with packaging up all the little share plate leftovers, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the way to go. So Christian, have you uh, ever done it? No, I, I haven't done it. Are you and jealous that I have? <laughs> a little bit because there's a part of me that would love to say, oh, I haven't fit. Well, there was a, there's a part of me that would love to not finish the meal to begin with. Oh, just so to leave a bit behind. <laughs> so you have that. Pre- you feel that pressure. So you're always finishing a meal. Yeah. Well, you yeah. you eat what you've ordered, and once that's finished, once you've eaten to the brim, yep. you cannot eat anymore. Mm. The meal is done, and then they take it away. If they wanted you to take it home, mm. they would offer. They would take your plates and go into a. Why container? don't they offer it? They do. If, if really? yeah, I've seen if someone particularly has not eaten a lot, there's like a lot left. I've had them go. Do you, want, do you want that to take away? And, and, and more often than not, they'd be like, absolutely not. It was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. The so other thing work. that, yeah, there's that thing of if there is stuff left on your plate, you get asked that question at the end of the meal, you get asked that question, was it was everything okay? Yeah. And yeah. I feel I feel this great need to just reassure them, go, no, that was beautiful. I'm just really full. How, Couldn't eat any more. How scared is that question? I know. As well? I know. It, was, was everything okay? Yeah, I know. Because sometimes it's not. And would you ever say something about a meal that's not okay? I don't know. Unless it's like a, a thing that 
I feel could potentially improve the the restaurant rather than like a personal preference. Like I, I they're yeah. not interested in me being like, uh, too many olives because I don't like olives. Like yeah, that's yeah, pointless, yeah. right? Whereas if it's like something that is. I don't know a fundamental flaw in what, I know what you're mean. doing. Then maybe, maybe yeah, I might bring it up. I if it's mean. a gelato and it's got too many olives, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're you within your right. I think I see. I think I see the entire thing as a bit of an experience. So you're there for the experience. Mm. Once the experience is over, that's it. Yeah. You leave. You don't. You don't take away. You don't go to a. You don't go to a, a, a cinema and then leave at three quarters of the way and go. Can I just have the last fifteen minutes of the film on a on a USB I love stick? That. I love just that. on a big USB. I love that. Christian could have used the popcorn as the takeaway example, but chose the chose the intellectual property. <laughs> what about the so with the takeaway meal though, Dion? What were you doing immediately after? You'd wrapped up the dinner because yeah. if you're going out afterwards to see a movie, going nah. out to a bar, you're nah, not doing takeaway then, are you? No, nah, no, nah, not unless you got your cool uh, or your warm bag. And I had that, <laughs> so I went saw a movie. No, no, I didn't, Christian. Don't stop with that face. Oh. Um, no, I think that yeah, you're right. You need to be going straight home. It needs to be. But the thing that makes me the most guilty about all of this is the plastic. The plastic is hell. What Jesus. do you do with all that pl- the plastic and then the plastic bag and then and yeah. then you can't recycle it because it's number <laughs> one? Or- to it. <laughs> nah, this is a real this is a real defining episode. I can already, <laughs> I can already feel it. <laughs> but that's the thing that makes me guilty. So I'm like, okay, so I'm recycling this food, but then I'm introducing plastic into the, the world for the- a thousand years. That's great. <laughs> the weirdest thing for me that you focused on yep. is not at all what I my I, my whole thing about this is like. Is it worth the amount of food, the trouble around that amount of food? Yep. Is it worth going to have a few mouthfuls tomorrow? And, oh, I don't, and, and nine out of time, nine out of ten times, it's not going to be worth it. There's going to be a few chips, a little bit of salad, and oh, a little bit of parma. There's nothing <laughs> like a dine-in meal, taking it away as a snack. Really? That's a, a great snack. snack. Little bit, little thing that you have. No, that's two a great. That is a great three snack. O'clock. Yeah, for Four sure. Four o'clock. But, but <laughs> I feel as though by the time you've reached the... Five the, o'clock. The, the <laughs> pinnacle. Any other time? Uh, when you've reached the pinnacle of your meal, yep. you're done with that meal. Like, you don't want to see it again. No, I do if it's amazing. Of course I do. No, but it's never going to be... you finish ne- the meal then? <laughs> well, I'm not taking home pizza. It's something... It's Asian <laughs> food. Wait, oh, on. Whoa, Asian whoa, food. Whoa, 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 whoa. Asian food is incredible. Thing, no, the one thing that packages up relatively easily yeah. and is in pieces, yeah. you're not taking home. Hang on, hang on, hang on. But... You no, but I get takeaway pizza all the time. Are you getting take? Have you ever taken leftover pizza from a restaurant home? Uh, no, you I'm haven't. Normally eating it. Normally finish it off. Yeah. No, but if you don't, would you uh, take it home? No, it's pretty weird. But it makes way more sense than anything else. It to does. Do that. But why don't we do it? No one does it. No yeah. one goes in to a yeah, restaurant, dines in it. leftover pizza. You leave it there. Yep. Asian food is the best. Asian food, rice, meat. <laughs> <laughs> they're, the, they're the things that define Asian food. <laughs> um, but it, but it reheats so well. That's the best thing about it. In those containers, so, then you pour it into a bowl. It's great. Sure. Uh, so it's a, for you. It's about how well you can reheat the meal. Yes. The next day. Yes. Absolutely. How we- or how well that meal suits a Tupperware container. Yep. So it's about the meal you're eating. Yep. And what it looks like yep. in a Tupperware container. I just thought of an idea. I, would I ever get to the point in my life where I'm going to a dining restaurant and I take Tupperware with me oh. with the view to take it away? I think that would be ridiculous and funny <laughs> but, and I'll do it. But why But why wouldn't that be allowed? See, it that, would be allowed, but socially it wouldn't. Why? Because we've got... This is what I, this is what I can't get my head around. Yep. Why is this taboo? If it feels like if it's I feel not- like a renter, I feel like I'm renting when I'm at a restaurant, I get my plate and then... If I'm three quarters of the way through, that's the end of my lease. And then, and then the plate with food goes back to the landlord in the kitchen. That's what it feels like. Like, I don't have yeah. rights to the, the, no, the end I, of the food. I agree with you that it feels like a moment in time. And that moment in time passes yeah. and you're done. And I, I never have felt the compulsion to be like, yeah, I really want to take these. Unless it's a thing of... I'm feeling ill or something and it's a whole half a burrito I didn't even touch Yeah. or you've massively over-ordered, which I don't tend to do. Mm. You know, some people get a bit carried away yep. and they've got, I'm going to use Mexican food because I'm very familiar with yes, it. Yeah. You've got two burritos, you've got three quesadillas, yeah. you've got six tacos. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, you're going to have heaps of leftovers, so portion them up and take them home. Well, maybe on menus, they need to be clearer about how big the portion is. There's would no you, consistency. Would you like to see the weight of a meal? 
Or, 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 or like an Australian percentage. standards. Yeah, Australian yeah. standards. Carbs to proteins to veggies. It'd be great. Using a, a bit of a pub standard here, the chicken parma, that will vary wildly from pub some to pub. Some of them are not Those chickens, Way some of them big. are huge. Yeah. Way too big. And I don't know the kind of person who is... I get... Th- I like... St- I now, I get to the end of it, I go, I'm stuffed. Yeah. Right? I don't know the kind of person who's like, yeah, massive chicken parma, delicious. Completely not even full yet. Yeah, it's too big. So... Let's say that we have, Josh, I'm going to use your Mexican feast as an example. We've got two burritos, three tacos, and six, no, three quesadillas <laughs> and doesn't, six doesn't tacos. matter, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reimagining the table uh, in front of us. And you think to yourself, well, these are all mine. Do you ever offer them to the people around you first or straight to take away? Oh, so oh. say it's so it's food I've ordered. Food you've ordered. I think generally if it's like a if it's like an easily portioned off thing that like you haven't touched and you haven't like eaten into, mm. that it's like and you just didn't get to it, you, you'd probably yeah, I probably would go, Oh, does anyone else want yeah. this, uh, maybe a slice of this, right? I think the obligation is on the person to offer that meal around, right? How often do you think are the waiters and waitresses going back into the kitchen, seeing a like a, a good sized bit of whatever and going, I got a peckish? Wouldn't uh, mind a bit. Nah. I, I worked. I, I worked at a big hospitality venue, and you wouldn't. Yeah, you wouldn't. But they were. That was full of elderly Italian men, though, wasn't it, Christian? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why you absolutely wouldn't. <laughs> now it's time to play a little game that we call Nursery Rhymes. It's a rubbish name, <laughs> so please, if you have any ideas of what we should call this segment, yeah. those familiar with it. Yep. Send it in on our socials. We'd love to actually name it properly, like some of our other genius names, <laughs> like yeah. the Roybus Challenge. <laughs> um, but what we do in Nursery Rhymes is we, we have played in the past and we think Nursery Rhymes are ridiculous and we think we can write our own and we can trick each other yep. into not being able to tell the real one versus our one. So we're going to go around the circle. We've each written one real and one fake and it's up to the other two to work out which is which. Christian, do you want to kick us off? A wise old owl (laughs) lived in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we all be like that wise old bird? (laughs) Oh, that is... If you've created that, that's that's a cracker. That's a cracker. When you look in a mirror, what can you see? A horse with a long face or a big strong tree? The mirror can lie if you are not clear of mind. Belief in yourself will reflect truth in kind. Oh, great right. rhyming. Congratulations, Christian. Thank you. That is tough. What was the name of the second one? Uh, neither of them had names, Dion. Oh, didn't they? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and neither had authors. <laughs> um, uh, I, reckon, I reckon the second one was... Real. I think I'm leaning towards there was the word which I wouldn't expect to hear in a nursery rhyme. I think it was reflection. <laughs> and and in kind <laughs> in as well. Reflect truth in kind. Reflect truth, truth in, in kind. kind, yeah. I think that's a bit much for, for a real one. So I think much? I think the mirror one is fake and I think the owl one is real. That's my guess. Dion? I reckon mirrors is real, owl is fake. Oh, we're opposite then. Yeah, opposite. Owl is real. Yes. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh Josh, would you like to read uh, out your nursery rhymes? Yeah, sure. Um, the first one is called Horsey, Horsey. Horsey, Horsey, where homeward bound, the wheels on the cart go round and round. Giddy up, little horsey, it's time to dash. Easy. The road is bumpy, but please don't crash. Horsey, Horsey, don't you stop. Let your hooves go clippity-clop. That, that's that's one. That's not bad. No, it's not good though. The second one. <laughs> I will get a sense here. It's called <laughs> Once I Saw a Little Bird. I mean, no, <laughs> there you go. calling I it. Mean, calling it. <laughs> Once I saw a little bird go hop, hop, hop. So I said, Little bird, will you stop, stop, stop? Did you though? <laughs> then I was going to the window to say, How do you do? But he shook his little <laughs> tail and away he flew. No way. If this, I mean, this would be the upset of the season. It honestly would. That I'd, How you aren't a nursery rhyme author, <laughs> if you've written number one and number two is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get out of Patrick. 
Get out. Yeah. Uh, so Christian, the I horse think it's one safe to say horse horse, horse has got to be real. Yeah, yeah. Horse is real. Horse is real. Uh, yeah. Horse is real. Horse is real. Horse is mine. Josh, yes, my congratulations. <laughs> but hang shocking, on, hang on, hang on, hang shocking on. nursery rhyme. <laughs> What? No, no, that's, that's the thing. So good. I don't think the focus is on Josh. I think the focus is on how bad that nursery <laughs> rhyme is. Yeah. Shocking. Unbelievable. Where did you find this? On the internet. So lazy. Great. Yeah. Oh, that feels so good. That's validation. Oh, Great. God. Dion, Dion, what do you All got? Right. Uh, I have um I have a nursery rhyme called Let's Make Some Pizza. <laughs> Game <laughs> <Came> over. <laughs> don't be shy. We're making pizza. Come and try. Let's make some pizza. <laughs> For me and you, we're making pizza. And mum helps too. Roll out some dough. Go, go, go. <laughs> Spread out the sauce, of course. And put on the cheese. Yes, please. <laughs> then whack on some ham. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> whack on some... <laughs> Okay, so just as a reminder, last time we played this, Dion didn't know what a nursery rhyme was. <laughs> All right, the second one, so that's the first one. Let's make some pizza. The second one is... Yeah, that's Dion's one. What's yeah, the next yeah. one? <laughs> yeah. Wendy loves winter. Wendy loved the winter from the snow to the rain. She loves the cold. It keeps her sane. Wendy hates the sun. It was far too hot. The winter was just for Wendy. It was just the shot. It was oh. just the shot. So pizza or winter? There's no chance in hell. Whack on the cheese. <laughs> Honestly, is it actual nursery rhyme, is it? No, but the, I think so, again, Dion. I think this is fundamentally flawed. <laughs> so you've either written pizza, <laughs> or you've picked something that's not a nursery rhyme. Because either way, that's not a nursery rhyme. It's got it to taste.com. <laughs> I, I vote. I vote number one. That, so that's the shot. I I don't give Dion enough credit. To have written a line like that for number two, unless yeah. it's that good. So it's yep. go- I'm, I'm gonna go pizza's fake. Second one is real. I'm going whack on some ham. <laughs> that is not. I've never heard such foul language in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> so I'm right. going for that. So Christian, you think That's pizza yours, is fake? Yep. And Wendy loves winter is real. Yes. Cool. You're both wrong. No. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is unbelievable. Thank you so much. Hang on, Dion. No, Thank no. you so much. We might be wrong, but that's not a nursery rhyme. Oh, yes, it is. It's one of the top hundred nursery rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> How good's that? The winter was just for Wendy. It was just the shot. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's good. He's got us before. Yeah, yeah. A bit, bit more of a bush poem last yeah. time. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Geez, I'm hungry. I could whack on some ham. <laughs> <laughs> The other night on TV, I was watching the rugby and they had this um, this roving camera on the boundary line, as they do, and there was a player that was standing on ready to come onto the ground and the camera got really, really close to him. Um, but he was avoiding eye contact with the camera so much. Yeah. Like the camera was sort of panning in front of him and he was sort of, his eyes were darting all over the place and just didn't catch any eye contact with the camera. And it made me think... It must be incredibly anxiety producing if you're a sportsman and you know all these cameras are on you, but you know that when you maintain any eye contact with the camera, you look like an absolute yeah. idiot. And I just wanted to ask you guys, is that something you've ever noticed? Is that something you're conscious of, Christian, when you're when you're playing sport and there's cameras around? <laughs> the illusion is gone. The moment that the sports person yeah. looks through the eyes of the lens, that idea of we're just capturing this happen. Uh, in the in the wild, these men are playing against each other. These women are playing against each other. Yeah, no, nah, it's all gone. Imagine if that happened in a David Attenborough documentary that a, that an animal catches <laughs> the camera and then everything's burst. But there must be a way. There, mu- the, I don't understand. They're all avoiding eye contact. It's and, ridiculous. And then there's a separate animal that doesn't want its identity shown, <laughs> so they blur its face out. It's a little bird when he's go on the field. <laughs> It's Josh's so, patch. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> was going to say, though, with, with that, generally what you'll see is if they're sitting watching the game on the bench or whatever it is, yep. and then there's a moment where they might watch a replay as they look up the screen and then they see themselves on the screen, mm. sometimes then they'll go, hey, guys, back to the game. That's true. Give a little yeah. quick way. But you always love the larrikin sportsman, the one that's willing when they're coming off the field, blow a kiss. You know, make a heart shape with two yeah. hands. Well, in the Australian Open, it's all the signing oh, of the camera. Oh, I That's cannot huge. stand signing the camera. Oh, it just must be so expensive <laughs> using a permanent marker. It's ridiculous. No, but I just don't understand the idea of why why that is a good experience. I'll tell you why. 
because Leighton Hewitt did it once in a moment of excitement and then the people at the AO and Channel 7 went, oh, this is great. We should do this every time. Put a glass panel over the front of the camera and give him a Sharpie. So what happens <laughs> with that glass? They slide it, what, wipe it off. They wipe it off, don't yeah, they? it's dumb. It is so dumb. I don't know. I really dislike that behaviour. Anyway, Josh, is that something you've noticed when, when you've... Have you been in any situation, putting you on the spot, have you been in any situation where you've had to avoid eye contact? For instance, at a wedding. You don't want to be looking straight down the barrel at a wedding. I know, when the big screen's going around the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> the kiss cam. <laughs> the bowl, were, the bowl the is coming in for the bride's head. <laughs> Kiss, did you say kiss cab? <laughs> you may now kiss no, no, cab the bride. No, 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 not me, not me. Go to the groom. That's great. Um, but have you no? Have you like? And what do? You, how do you feel when you're avoiding eye contact? Like you don't want to look at it. You really don't. You mean on a camera? When yeah, a camera's got camera. me? No, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for the camera. I want to get. Oh, the down, camera's not looking for you. I want to get down the barrel, right? So I do the search with the hand. Whereas I move to get my orientation. If I see him on a camera. On a screen, rather, yep. I'll tra- traject my hand around, and then oh, when it's pointing at the, the camera, camera, I go, "Well, the camera's up there." Have you ever been on a big screen at a stadium? No, no, absolutely. You have not. been, yeah. really? That's, what are the odds? The odds are tiny. Uh, not when you're wearing a giant Mexican hat. Really? <laughs> oh, really? Were you, yeah. were you in a group of Mexican hats? Um, no, we were at the baseball, and we'd been to Mexico that we were in uh, San Diego. Mm. We'd been to Mexico, or well, Mexico. We've been to Tijuana that day. Yep. Bought a, a sombrero for eleven dollars US. Wow, that's a good deal. What it's a rip! A, it's that's very expensive. It does. Ash. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Still got it. Um, yeah. And yes, yeah, so we went there. Just throw it in the bin. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, uh, we were there and um, some some uh, like promo girls came over and goes, oh, do you guys want to be? It was me and a friend. Do you want to go on the big screen? Like, yeah. And we went and did a dance competition. Oh, I don't know if I spoke about this on the podcast Hang on, before. hang on. But that's completely different. That's not that's not an organic pan. That's just a setup. I, I, I've always felt as though the people that get put on television yep. must pay a bit more for their tickets. No. And I reckon they're in the know. No. Garbage. I reckon they know so that the this M- is prime TV spot. Well, the MCG is an example. There's only cameras on one side of the ground. There you go. So if you've got to be on the opposite side of the ground. The other thing that they love to do, especially at the cricket... Is as soon as the person cottons on to being on screen, they're off. Bang, they're off. Yeah, mm. that's true. And it's like this weird give or take thing where as soon as you realise it's ethereal and it's gone. Have yeah. you ever caught a ball at an event? I've never, I, I've always, I've always wanted the opportunity to catch a ball at the cricket. Why? I've just, I want to be that guy who catches the ball and then they and then throw everyone. him up and then he injures himself. <laughs> I've always wanted to be injured at the cricket. Uh, what if, but what about the potential loss of dropping the ball? Yeah, it's amazing, but you're not expected to take it. Yes, that's true. You're really not expected to. But if you do take it... You're the, a hero. You're, you're an absolute hero. Yeah, you get minted. I, I, would, yeah. <laughs> I would be absolutely terrified if it came within like 20 metres of me. Really? Do you think I you haven't catch caught, it? I haven't caught a cricket ball. I've, I've, really, I've never really played cricket. I was mainly tennis balls and then like those incredible balls. So yeah, actual yes. cricket balls, I've very limited experience. Yeah. I'm not going to take a six. Very heavy. Yeah. yeah. You, if professional sportsmen find them difficult to catch, yeah. <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun thing to look up on YouTube, like people in crowds or security guards catch balls oh, that's amazing yep. there's this guy I watched it the other day there's this guy at the cricket he's just literally just on the ground on the boundary line he's sitting there and he just catches it like this what are the odds like what no on an s- audio podcast no, no smile <laughs> no smile I'm not smiling <laughs> you, you have never seen someone go absolutely bombastic as when you're at a gig and one of those big inflatable balls starts oh, yes. flying overhead. Uh, yes. People go nuts to get their hands on them and spike and them around. And you know the problem is they don't wait. They're so desperate to touch it yeah. that they don't wait for the actual person it's oh. falling on to give it a nice little spike up. Yep. It's like seven dozen hands flicking it from too far away. I'm like, That's just... Right. Just everybody wait. A baker's seven dozen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's just gonna it's gonna land on one person and let them push it on. Yes. Have you ever had to support a crowd surfer? Ooh, I uh, think yeah. I have. It's it's very tough. Yeah, you, but you feel like you got to step up in that moment, right? You can't just back out. Well, you got to so make sure that. So, but there's so many hands. The the the, the and, terrifying and the work is made so light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The, the terrifying one is when someone uh, jumps off of stage into the mosh yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. underneath. Yeah. That's terrifying. You've had that experience? Yeah. It's great. Did they make eye contact with you? Uh, no, they're looking at the camera. So circling back... <laughs> circling back to the eye contact thing, there's now this thing on fa- when you FaceTime call, it redirects your eyesight using AI. So you're, looking at the, so you're looking at the camera even though you can be scrolling through your phone. Apple iPhones, re- there's a... There's a the facial well, correction, I, the eye correction thing. How laser eye. I mean, it's laser eye. We are we are looking at each other in the eye right now. Yeah. 
And you're winking. Yep, I'm winking. <laughs> um, how do you find maintaining eye contact with someone? Um, I don't know. I think that I'm sometimes self-conscious about eye contact and making sure I give good eye contact. Oh, yeah. I honestly don't think I can go more than like three seconds. Yeah. And then I'm like, it's too long. Yeah, the, I know And the moment mean. you realise you've locked for more than three seconds, you, I, I can't remember what I was talking about because yeah. I suddenly become yep. very cognizant. Yes. We're looking in each other's eyes for too long here. Why yeah. does this happen? Why are we so... What, this is this is like... Did you see how mad we are at the table right now? Yeah. Looking back and forth between each I'm other. I'm so focused on it now. No, I, see, I'm not... I, I, feel, I feel really... I think it's when I know someone really well that I feel comfortable. It's when I don't know a person that well. Mate, is it because we're peering into someone's brain? I don't know. It's just <laughs> it's just that too long. But but it's definitely incumbent. Try to look at it properly. It's definitely incumbent on the talker to yep. avert the gaze. I think it's entirely yes. reasonable for the the talkie who's being talked to. Talkie. At. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're say you have to be on the coast when you when you make eye contact. So if the talkie, they will generally, and I will do it. I will just stare at the person's eyes, but I'm not affected by them looking away and coming back to me. That's expected. As yep. the talker, Josh. Yes. Where are you looking first? I think I could start in the eyes, but then I think it, it's it's those it's those moments of thinking, right? Yeah, they're the moments that you go, oh, you maybe um and ah, and then yep. you can look away. But where do get you your look? Thoughts and you come back. Where do you look? Just background, background. Uh, you don't want to look at the person. You don't want you don't want to because then they start thinking there's something on my shirt. Oh, that yeah. would be I, weird. I've I've been caught doing that where you might just look at someone like you'll have a quick little glamp, glamps, glamps. <laughs> You'll have a quick glance down at their top <laughs> and then back up. And all of a sudden, they're focusing on their top. They're wiping yeah. away, looking at their teeth. You've yeah, got to go shocking. background. Or you, you might watch someone walking past, like a waiter going past. You just watch that for a bit. The other thing, sometimes for patchwork, we have to do sort of um, social media and Instagram stories and that mm. kind of thing. And we do, you know, do a video. What are they called? Selfie videos. That's what they're called. <laughs> and and sometimes I'll just want to keep constant eye contact with the camera. And then I look at, look at it back and I go, that doesn't look cool. That doesn't look cool at all. I gotta be looking, looking away, oh, and that's, that's what social—that's what influencers do. And I, I, I absolutely hate but it. It's <laughs> looking around and like just, just focus. You're doing one thing. But just also, focus on the camera and look like a freak. But you know what's weird though? <laughs> like the looking into someone's <laughs> eyes is okay. Change that for a camera. It's very different experience when yeah. you're like, I'm filming something to a camera. I need to look into the camera. Ah, and Josh j- just finished up Game Boys Fringe Festival Game Boys, and how good Christian was Josh talking to a camera. Yeah. How comfortable was Josh took, talking to a camera? But it took me ages to get comfortable with pretend it's like eyes and you're looking at a thing because it's just like, it's hard. It's so hard whenever you have a monitor and you can see yourself like you're doing a Skype call yeah. or something like that. As soon as you can see yourself, it's so hard not to look at yourself constantly. There needs to be there needs to be some sort of technology. Maybe if, if cameras had two eyes, it might make it easier <gasps> or with an iris in it. With green eyes, maybe. <laughs> you maybe like a webcam that's like looks like a human eye. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It's a great idea that blinks. That blinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. <laughs> it's like something for babies to get them comfortable with the technology. I think it's a great idea, Christian. You don't think that's a good idea? I don't think it's a great idea. <laughs> I think it's an idea. Just one other thing I want to mention about the uh, the eye contact. When I'm in a one on one situation, mm. I actually really don't. I don't really like sitting across from someone. I'm the same. I'd much rather maybe sitting in a bench space oh. or something like that because yep. the, the, the one-on-one across, I'm not good at. I love a walk and chat. Be on a walk and chat. Hey, the one-on-one is confrontational. What do, yeah. you, what, what, what do you do if you're going to shoot someone? <laughs> you're, you, you're facing them and you've got a gun. It's the same and posture. It's, and it's high noon. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? What was I supposed to do, Your Honour? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. It's very confrontational. It should be, you shouldn't have to focus on, yeah, on that. Scenario. Are you good at a one-on-one cross the table, Christian? I, I'd prefer. I think I'd prefer the the people watching stance of both facing something. I'm not with you on the walk and talk. A walk and talk is nice, but if you're with a quick walker, oh, I mean, if you're going for a walk and talk, that's slow. Keep it down. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess my my pace is around what I'm doing. Right. If if there is if it's aimless and you are just walking to talk, I will go very slow. But if we're trying to get somewhere, I will go very quick. So and what, I don't, I'm not rushing, but that's just my pace. Mm. So what I'm wondering, Josh, is that if you have a preference for not sitting opposite each other, are you suggesting, I mean, we're in this studio now in Christian's mum's house, we're sitting opposite each other. Are you suggesting we should be sitting at a bench instead? No, no. What we're doing now is great because directly opposite me is nothing. We're in a triangle situation. Ah, but directly opposite me is Christian and I'm very uncomfortable about that. <laughs> <laughs> I had my 
phone out the other day and I pulled Instagram up and mm. I decided to just go for a big old scroll. Mm. And I scrolled for ages and I scrolled all the way back till uh, I found Geppetto. <laughs> Um, at Got Wood. <laughs> uh, it's a photo taken from behind prison cell bars, and the caption reads, Needed some kindling. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Pinocchio3310. <laughs> Josh, I can see your phone now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was scrolling through, scrolling right, 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 right to the bottom, got right down, and got down to Charles Dickens. At what the Dickens. <laughs> um, and the photo was, it was a shot of the final draft of A Christmas Carol. And the caption was, finally finished this epic. So proud of this work. I just hope it becomes popular enough to one day have a movie made out of it starring furry puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag a puppet's Christmas Carol. Hashtag not good with names. <laughs> And Dion, you were scrolling as well? Yeah, I was scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I came across a painting of a woman with her face, mouth and eyes in random parts of the canvas. And the, the handle was Pablo number five. <laughs> <laughs> and the caption read, um, these models with facial features all over the place are getting increasingly hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> Hopeful that museums around the world will just be happy displaying my rubbish pottery so I can earn a quick buck. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, I'm a painter, not a potter. <laughs> You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? We love hearing your really goods. And last patch, we performed at the Fringe Festival and lots of you were typing your really goods away because you were desperate to have them read out on, <laughs> on the show. Well... We're going to read some of them that didn't quite make it in the fridge show. So do you know what Adam thinks is really good? When you're craving a fizzy drink and you find a stray can at the back of your fridge. Oh, really good. Really, really good. good. Really, good. Really, good. Really, good. really good. Really good. And you know what MEV thinks is really good? When you're fumbling with your keys and your housemate seamlessly opens the door for you. Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. And you know what Jesse thinks is really good? When you go to a brick and mortar shop and they actually have the item you want in stock. Oh, really, really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. You know what? Hey, thanks so much for listening to Welcome to Patchwork this week. Uh, it's been very fun. This is our first patch back since Fringe Festival. Um, we're going to rip these out every fortnight so we hope that you're enjoying um, Patchwork tell a friend if you like the show don't tell a friend if you don't stop listening if you don't <laughs> there's no there's, there is no point there's, <laughs> there's no point anyway um, yeah we're on Facebook Instagram and Twitter as you can imagine we're a podcast and we're on social media um, so sign up if you don't yet have an account and go and like us which account should they sign up to uh, first any Dion? of the th- I reckon Twitter is probably the most frustrating one at the moment um, so sign up to a Twitter account and of course, thank you so much, Patreons. You mean the world to us. If you want to sign up to become a Patreon, you can go to www.patreon.com forward slash welcome to patchwork. We're going to start bringing out the bonus patches. Every off week, you'll get a bonus patch. Um, they're really super fun to record. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your support. It means the world to us. I guess you could say we're funnier in the bonus patch. <laughs> I would think so, but you'd yeah. need to sign up to find that out, Christian. <laughs> As we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh, what patch did you sew in this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week was you catching a cricket ball at the MCG, then nervously asking the staff for a takeaway container. (laughs) (laughs) Christian, what patch did you sew this week? Thank you very much, Josh. This week, I sewed into my patch the weird and wacky world where, during the game, sports people only make eye contact with the camera. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is professional tennis player Christian winning the Korean Open and signing a glass container full of takeaway kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork for another week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
It's always good to end on that. I want to see that. Yeah, it's I great. I want to see that. It's a really long po- uh, nursery rhyme as well. It's longer than that. Let's make some fucking pizza. Whack on some cheese. Was it whack on cheese or Look whack on ham? Whack on Let's some make ham. some pizza. 4.4 ratings out of 300 reviews. Sounds like a... Fu- it is a recipe. <laughs> Are you sure it's not just a song? Uh, no, a children's song? No, it's a... Ch- Oh, it's a it's a song it's a rhyme. Ch- children's song that rhymes. Come on, I'm in a rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a rhyme called Baby Shark. 